Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com, and this is National Airport. In this video, we'll explore one of my favorite airports in the United States. Along the way, we'll check out a unique vantage point for spotting planes, take an unusual means of transportation to the airport, pay our respects to dearly departed Gate 35X, and check out the brand new concourse that's just opened. Located just across the Potomac from our nation's capital, Washington's Reagan National Airport is one of two operated by the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority, or MWA. The other is Dulles. I've got a video highlighting lounge hopping opportunities at Dulles. There's a link in the description below. One of the coolest aspects of the airport, at least for an aviation enthusiast like me, is not even at the airport. It's Gravely Point Park, located at the end of runway 19, where it's possible to get up close and personal with the airplanes. On days when the winds are out of the south, they pass a mere one or 200 feet above. Because of noise concerns and the restricted airspace over Washington, D.C., the approach in a national airport on days like this is pretty unusual. This approach is called the river visual, and as the name implies, pilots follow the river to the airport. And that explains the last minute turn pilots have to make when approaching this runway. And it's also why passengers flying into national airport are in for a pretty exciting ride. If you're lucky enough to have a window seat on the left side of the airplane when they're operating in this direction, you're in for an epic view of the National Mall. This has to be one of the gnarliest approaches in the world. A quarter mile final, jeez. Gravelly Point Park has a rugby pitch, picnic tables, and plenty of open space where everyone is enthusiastic about the approach. Having an app like Flight Radar 24 or Flight Aware allows park goers to keep track of when to expect airplanes and gain key insights like where they're coming from or which aircraft type is coming up next. It's rare to have a public space this close to a runway. I can only think of two other similar airports with access directly under the approach like this. This is like St. Martin without the beach or the in and out at LAX without the in and out or LAX. So really it's just like National Airport and Gravelly Point. Still amazing. That was the Piedmont Airlines Retrojet A319. So cool. I've seen it here before, but so awesome to see it up close. Man, I love this stuff. The biggest airplane that serves National Airport is a 757. Unfortunately, none were scheduled for the time while we were there. And that's just another reason to return. Also, that ice cream looked really good. I would be more than happy to stay at Gravelly Point all day. Uh, there's, it's always so exciting seeing something coming in. But unfortunately, uh, speaking of coming in, we've got to go out. You see, we've got to catch a flight back home. So uh, we're headed over to the terminal. This is the first time I will have ever walked to an airport for departure. That's pretty exciting. Uh, but of course, uh, when it comes to national, getting there is very easy. Uh, you could certainly drive or uh, even take Metro. Very comfortable seats. But we're walking today. This is the Mount Vernon Trail, and it's possible to walk or bike it all the way from the National Mall out to Mount Vernon in Fairfax County. In fact, you could walk from downtown D.C. all the way to the airport. Anyway, it took us about 30 minutes to get from Gravelly Point to the terminal, walking at a pretty leisurely pace. Be sure to exercise caution. There are wild animals about. We also captured our first view of Washington National's new concourse, which we'll explore in just a few minutes. But the time flew by, and before we knew it, we were looking at an old friend. I've always loved the architecture here in Terminals B and C. They opened in 1997. Here it is from the outside. Eventually, security is going to be moved so that the entire space, called National Hall, will be inside security. That'll allow passengers to move more freely between concourses. But my enthusiasm doesn't mean I'm not equally impressed with the old school charm of Terminal A, which dates back to 1941. Things don't stand still at National Airport. 
They've just opened a brand new concourse with 14 gates, bringing the airport's total number of gates to 60. It's an impressive space befitting such an impressive airport. Before we check out the new concourse, we need to go honor a friend. There are two numbers and a letter that spark fear and loathing in the hearts and minds of people all over this country. It's three, five, and X. This right here is what's left of gate 35X. A, um, a spot that holds many memories for me and I'm sure others, but uh, at this point it's time for us to pay our respects to 35X. I will remember you, will you remember me? For those of you who did not get the experience, maybe even the privilege, of flying out of Gate 35X here at Washington National Airport, the best way to describe it is like if, if a, a bus terminal were put inside an airport, because that's really what it was. So. Pretty much all of the CR2s and ERJ145s flew out of 35X. So everybody going anywhere like the second tier, third tier city, anywhere on the East Coast and part of the Midwest would have to go downstairs here uh, into a tiny holding room and then get on a bus and ride out to the gate. Now this was great if you liked airplanes and the weather was great, but if either of those two things were not the case, it was a pretty terrible experience. If you look closely, you can find evidence of 35X all over the place. Here's one of the old boarding ramps that's now at my home airport of PTI. Simply put, there was just too much and too small a space here. So that's why it was really universally derided. That said, I think pretty much everybody is excited about the opening of the new concourse over here. So let's go check out the massive space that has been built to replace Gate 35X. We'd actually visited the new concourse when we'd flown in a couple of evenings earlier. That arrival experience, particularly on a rainy night like this one, was heads and shoulders above the old way of doing it. There was no waiting outside for luggage, no overcrowded bus, no cramped basement. Instead, this new concourse offers 21st century charm. But getting to explore it during the day really showed it in its best light. I found the signs to be maybe too small or too high. I'm not sure why, but they were easy to miss, and I was not the only one. I overheard other passengers who were confused about where to go as well. There's a long walkway that connects to the other gates. It's a work in progress. There's not much in the way of shopping or restaurants open at this time, but they're coming soon. And based on what we saw, there's going to be plenty of demand. Airports are filling up. Because it serves regional jets, which are low to the ground, these jet bridges are unusually long in order to accommodate the Americans with Disability Act slope requirements. The jet bridges MWA selected are perfect for the job, though. I really like the ease with which gate check bags can be delivered. I'm not a transportation policy expert, but using National's scarce runway capacity for regional jet after regional jet full of connecting passengers does not seem like the best use of such a constrained airport. But what do you think? Should DCA be used as a hub? Let me know in the comments below. The concourse is recognizably national, but with subtle differences that make it really appealing. It's clear there's more work to do, but again, and I cannot stress this enough, it's so much better than 35X. That's gonna be a brand new 14,000 square foot Admirals Club. And if it's anything like this existing club, it's gonna be pretty nice. There are a lot of great things about this new concourse, but maybe the best is the fact that uh, American Airlines have retired everything that doesn't have a first-class cabin out of this airport. So that means there are no more CRJ-200s, there are no more ERJ-145s flying out of Washington Reagan Airport, which is fantastic news. These work tables are nice. I just wish the plugs worked. I guess they're just not turned on yet. These chairs overlooking the ramp action were incredibly popular. It's amazing to think that so many of these flights, almost all of them really, used to emanate out of gate 35X. So this massive new space is such an improvement. 
And I can't publish an airport video without a brief mention of the airport carpet. What do you think of this dizzying design? I really love this new concourse. Uh, sure, there's some teething problems, some signage issues, some of the plugs don't work. All that'll get worked out. It's gonna be even better when the restaurants and shopping opens, which sounds like it's gonna be pretty soon. Uh, but this is without a doubt about a million miles above 35X, not that that takes much. Hey, between now and the next time, see you at the airport. I could easily and happily, oh, there's a mosquito on me, that sucks, okay. And this is Washington National Airport. That was the Piedmont Airlines Retrojet A318. Uh, 19, A319. Where are my L1011 fans at? Pop me in the comments. Back to the airport in a montage. What's your fondest memory of 35X? Just now when we got to pay our respects to 35X. 